Now that you have an Instant Pot, it's time to get it out of the box and start using it. Well, almost time. Hey there, I'm Kristen from The Mindful Mom and I wanna welcome you into my kitchen and teach you seven things you must know about your Instant Pot before you can start using it. Number one, it's not as fast as you may think. Most recipes only indicate the cooking time, not the time it takes to come to pressure or for pressure to release, which can add up to 30 minutes total time. So you wanna plan accordingly, but don't panic. The Instant Pot is still much faster for cooking things like dried beans, soups, chilies, roasts, than conventional cooking. Number two, you must have liquid in order for your Instant Pot to come to pressure. For a three quart, you need a half a cup of liquid. For a six quart, one cup. And for an eight quart, one and a half cup. But not all liquid is created equally. You must have thin liquid, like stock or broth or beer or juice. Not thick liquid like canned mushroom soup or tomato-based products. And pro tip, the liquid you choose will help to flavor what you're cooking, so choose accordingly. Stock is always more flavorful than water. Number three, most of the functions are useless. I know you got excited because you bought a 10-in-1 instead of a 7-in-1, thinking that your Instant Pot can do more. Well, I hate to tell you, most of those functions are just preset cook times on high pressure. When you hit the poultry button, the Instant Pot gives you a predetermined time. It doesn't know if you're cooking chicken breasts or a whole chicken, and depending on those times can result in disaster. You wanna be in charge. You wanna hit manual or pressure cook. Be sure that high pressure is selected and use the plus or minus buttons to select the appropriate cook time. Number four, you wanna make sure that your Instant Pot is sealed in order for pressure to be reached. Take a look at your lid and make sure that your sealing ring is nice and secure on the lid. And then when you place the lid on your Instant Pot, make sure your vent knob is pointed towards sealed, not venting. And after you cook a recipe, you wanna know should I do a quick release of pressure or a natural pressure release? Natural pressure release is almost always best, especially when you're cooking meats or soups. You never wanna do a quick pressure release. To do so will result in either soup being spewed all over your kitchen or tough meat. Neither is desirable. Even if the directions tell you to do a quick pressure release, it's almost always best to wait at least five minutes before releasing any pressure. And when you're cooking meat, at least 10 to 15 minutes. One thing I love about the Instant Pot is that it can cook things from frozen, which if you're like me, sometimes you might forget to take the meat out of the freezer the night before you intend to cook it. With the Instant Pot, you don't have to worry. It can safely cook frozen meat. All you need to do is add an additional 50% to the cook time. And keep in mind, it'll take a little bit longer to come to pressure since the contents are partially frozen. The last tip I have today is to remember you can double your recipe without doubling the cook time. Just keep in mind you don't wanna fill your Instant Pot more than two thirds of the way full when cooking under pressure and simply double the ingredients and set it for the original cook time. Just keep in mind it may take a few more minutes to come to pressure since the Instant Pot is more full. Now you're ready to cook for the Instant Pot. So join me as I share with you my favorite Instant Pot recipes and a happy cooking.